Virtual machines aren't something new. They've been around for quite some time. And while virtualization software hasn't really evolved all that much, the software you run on a virtual machine has. So when talking about virtualization, you have options. You can run it on your local machine, or you can run it on the server. So if you're thinking about running it on your local machine, you have options like VMware, Parallels, VirtualBox, QEMU, KVM, and the list goes on and on and on. This is a good option for someone who doesn't have a dedicated machine that they can allocate just to virtualization. But if you do have another machine you can allocate virtualization to, you can run virtualization servers like ESXi, QEMU, Proxmox VE, Zen Server, and the list goes on and on and on. So I put together a list of things you can do on a virtual machine, and here they are in no particular order. Hey, welcome back. So I'm Techno Tim, and today we're going to talk about things you can do with a virtual machine. As a reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you'd like to continue this conversation about virtual machines, hop in my stream. I'd love to have you. Now, I have 20 things on my list, and I've organized them all into categories. Not all of them may apply to you, but hopefully this sparks some ideas so that you can discover new things you can do with virtual machines. So first up is learning a new OS. Maybe you're running Windows, maybe you're running Mac, and you want to check out a Linux distribution. You went out to distrowatch.org and you found some of the top distributions. So maybe you want to check out Pop! OS, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, Manjaro, or any other Linux distribution. You could very easily spin that up on the machine you're on now. Well, unless it's a mobile device, but you know what I'm saying. But what if you want to discover old operating systems? Say, go back to Windows 95 or Windows 98 or Windows 2000 and see what those are all about. Or maybe you want to learn about a whole entire environment and you can't set that environment up in your own home network. You could set up and virtualize a whole entire environment with virtualization. You could set up Active Directory, something like DNS or a mail server. The list really goes on and on and on. So I lumped everything about learning into this first category. Okay, number two. Home automation. So home automation has been taking off the last couple of years. Maybe you don't want to use HomeKit or Google Home or Alexa to control all your devices. Well, Home Assistant is an open source answer to that. So Home Assistant is a home automation platform that you can run within your network and all of your data stays there. You can control things like lights, garage doors, or any number of IoT devices you have on your network. It's definitely worth checking out if you're into home automation. And another quick tip is if you're using HomeKit and your device isn't HomeKit certified, you can check out something like HomeBridge. HomeKit acts like a bridge from third-party devices to Apple devices so that they can communicate and you can add them to your home automation on your Apple device. This is great for devices that aren't HomeKit certified. Okay, number three, run a web server. Running a web server at home is pretty easy. Maybe you want to run your personal blog with WordPress or Ghost, or maybe you just want to spin up your own front end using Angular, React, Vue, or any other number of front end technologies. This is really simple with something like Apache or Nginx, but if you're just running a blog, check out Ghost or WordPress. Number four, running your own API. So maybe you have some data at home that you want to serve out over an API, or maybe you're a software developer and just want to serve out some data. This is very easy to do with Node.js, Go, Python, PHP. All you have to do is build your API and serve it out. Another idea is you could put an API gateway in front of that, something like Kong. But either way, this is something that virtual machines can handle very easily. Number five, home security. So building your own home security system at home is a lot easier than you think. I've been doing it for years and I've been using something called Blue Iris. So Blue Iris is a piece of software that sits on my Windows virtual machine. All of my cameras feed their video feed to it. And then I can get alerts or record or view that video on the virtual machine or from an app. One of the advantages to keeping this on your own home network is that I don't pay a subscription fee. I bought the software and it runs on my virtual machine. All of the data stays on my virtual machine and I don't have to send it to the cloud or pay a subscription fee. But with that comes managing a little bit of complexity, but I enjoy the complex. If you're looking for open source or free alternatives, there are quite a few out there. Something like ZoneMinder might work, albeit I haven't checked it out yet. Okay, number six, home entertainment. Now I'm bucketing a lot of things into the home entertainment category, but most of them are around personal streaming. You can run something like a Plex server and serve all of your personal videos to yourself. Plex even has stuff like camera backup for your phone, streaming music, as well as streaming your own pictures to yourself. Been using Plex for years. I love Plex, it's a great service. But if you're looking for open source alternatives, there are things like Kodi and Envy, 
which pretty much do the same thing. So number seven is network firewall or a virtual appliance firewall. So this is a virtual firewall that protects all of your home network from the internet. There are a lot of great options out there. So PFSense is one of the most popular ones out there. It's well supported, very popular and very stable and has a lot of great features. And there are lots of alternatives in this space. You have things like Untangle, OpenSense, even XG Firewall by Sophos. But really, it's gonna be up to you to evaluate which one meets your needs and which one's gonna give you the protection you want at home. And number eight, home network. So this might be managing your home network on the other side of the firewall. Now there are a few players in this space. The one that I use is Unify by Ubiquity. So I have a Unify access point and I use this software to manage, monitor, and deploy access points. It gives me a lot of really good information about what's going on in my home network, some of the best channels to use, some of the noisy neighbors that have access points that are on the same channels as mine. And if I were using more Ubiquity hardware, I would get more features. So if you're using Unify or something similar, having a virtual machine dedicated to your local network is probably a good thing. Okay, number nine, VPN servers. Now, I'm not talking about private VPN or ways to VPN or tunnel into private networks. I'm talking about VPNing into your home network when you're away. So this is a great option when you're on a public network or even your phone's network day to day. VPNing back home to then tunnel back out gives you a little bit of peace of mind. It can give you access to all of your resources at home. Say you need to remote into a machine at home, say you need to print something at home, or you just don't trust the network you're on. Building your own VPN server with something like OpenVPN is pretty easy to do. But if you bopped it into number seven, most of those come with VPN software, so you kind of get two for one. But if you haven't virtualized your firewall or your home appliance router doesn't support it, building a VPN server is a good option. Okay, number 10. This is a huge category and it opens up a ton of possibilities. Running Docker at home. So running Docker at home gives you a ton of possibilities. Some I've already mentioned. A lot of the things I already mentioned could be containerized. And if you want, I might have a video on that later. If so, let me know in the comments below. But if you really want a good orchestration framework for Docker, you can run something like Kubernetes at home. And if you want to manage that, you can run something like Rancher. So running Rancher at home to orchestrate Kubernetes to then orchestrate Docker containers is a really good option and a robust option to give you Docker at home. Number 11, a database server. So maybe you're running some services at home and you need to store that in some kind of persistent storage. A database server might be something for you. Sure, you can run a database on your local machine, but putting that off on another virtual machine and not worrying about it seems to be a good option. Now, there are all kinds of databases out there. You have Postgres, Mongo, SQL, MySQL, and really the list goes on and on and on. But building a virtual machine and keeping your databases on that seems to be a good option so that you don't have to worry if you need to reformat or rebuild your own machine. They're safe on another machine. Number 12. A file server. Now this could be anything. It could be as simple as a Windows or a Linux machine with Samba Share set up, or you could go all out and set up a FreeNAS server. Now I really enjoy FreeNAS. I have FreeNAS at home and I actually have it virtualized too. FreeNAS supports all my file server needs. And I know that there are a lot of alternatives out there, but I've kind of settled on FreeNAS. Prior to FreeNAS, I was just using a Windows Share, which accomplishes a lot of the same things but FreeNAS gives me a lot more options. So there are alternatives out there like Open Media Vault, which seems to be getting some traction, but I've only used FreeNAS, so that's the only one I can comment on. Number 13, ad blocking. So you're probably familiar with things like ad blocking in Chrome or your browser extension, but what if you could ad block your whole entire home? Well, that's what Pi-Hole's job is. So you could set up a Pi-Hole server at home, use it as your DNS, and it will block all ads for every device at home. And if you use this in combination with the VPN server I talked about, you could even block them on the go. So I've been running Pi-Hole at home for about a year now, and it's great. There's a little bit of setup you need to do for Pi-Hole, but once you get it set up and running and fine tune all of your block lists, you really start to understand which devices are trying to communicate with the outside world. But setting it up on a virtual machine is something simple you can do in a couple of hours. So 14, personal cloud. So maybe you want access to your documents or your pictures on the go. Maybe you want to edit them, maybe you want to share them, and maybe you want a Google Drive-like experience. Well, that's exactly what Nextcloud does. So I've used Nextcloud for quite some time just to share files, but you can also use it for things like collaboration, backing up your phone's pictures, using it as a photo gallery, or giving people access to your documents. So if you want to keep your documents on-premise at home, and you want a light alternative to Google Drive, Nextcloud seems to fit that bill. And if not, there are many alternatives to Nextcloud. This just seems to be one of the most popular ones. All right, number 15, 
FTP server. Now I know some of this was kind of covered in 14, but 14 I was really going after personal cloud, where 15 it's kind of a public cloud, but your own public cloud. So FTP servers are still pretty popular. This is a good option if you want to share large files, you want to secure them, you want to do it over SSL, or you just like FTP clients. Is that a thing? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> So many of the use cases for an FTP server fit some of the other options I talked about, but I want to call this out specifically because FTP servers are still around. 16, wait, no wait, 16, yeah. 16, reporting server. Now this might seem really boring, but with the explosion of data, indexing, graphing, and visualizing that data has become really awesome. You got things like Kibana or Grafana, that can help you visualize some of the data that you have. This can help you analyze the data, see trends, or just give you some really pretty pictures to look at. One way that I use Grafana is to measure my APIs and see the response time, see the latency, see how much bandwidth they're using, but you might find a different use form. And you'd be surprised how many IoT devices support something like this with a little extra configuration. Okay, 17. This is a touchy topic, but a torrent box. Now, hear me out. I'm not talking about torrents for bad or piracy or anything like that. I'm talking about a torrent server for legal reasons. <laughs> So DistroWatch, you know, the Linux distribution site I mentioned earlier, has torrents for many Linux distributions. So if you want to download one using a torrent or you want to help seed and give the next person Linux, building a torrent server is a good option for a virtual machine. 18. Backup server. Now I'm lumping a few things into a backup server. One is the traditional backup where you actually backup items to the server another synchronization. So if you want to back up other systems on your network, something like your backup is a good option. It's, it's open source. Or you could use a commercial product like Backblaze. But having a dedicated machine there to either be the target of backups or backing up to the cloud is a really good idea and a good option for a virtual machine. Now, if you want to sync things or make things available, you have things like Duplicati or SyncThing that allows you to sync data from other machines down to that server. Now I know those aren't true backup solutions, but it is making those files available on multiple machines so you have copies of them. But either way, backing up your data or making your data available on more machines is a pretty good idea for disaster recovery. So if you got space on a virtual machine, you should probably set up a backup server to back up some of your data. 19, now this is another big one, but Game server. Now I'm kind of lumping game server and game playing into one, but if you want to run a traditional game server on a virtual machine, this is a great option. You can run something like a Minecraft server on your virtual machine and keep it off your main machine. That way it's dedicated, it's always on, and you don't have to worry about when you reformat your machine. Now the other half of that is just gaming in general. Now this does take a lot of extra configuration to get working and some specialized hardware, but you can actually game on a remote machine. I have a video where I set up remote gaming on a machine using something called Proxmox. Again, it took specialized hardware and a little bit of know-how, but I've documented the whole entire process. So also lumping into the game server or gaming is taking advantage of that video card. So if you can take advantage of that video card, you can do some more gaming in home using something like Steam in home streaming. You could stream your whole entire Steam collection to any screen in your home using Steam in home streaming. You could stream your game collection to your TV, your Apple TV, or another PC on your network. And lumping in a video card into this category opens up many, many more possibilities. But again, it's very specialized, so I didn't want to go into all the use cases. So let's just keep it at that. And last but not least, number 20, crowdsourcing research. So something like Folding at Home has been around quite a long time but it's gained a ton of popularity over the last couple of months. So Folding at Home allows you to download jobs from their servers, process those jobs, and upload them back to their servers, all to help find cures for diseases. Now this is crowdsourced because everyone pulls down a job, everyone works on that job individually, and then everyone uploads the results to them. This is a really good job for a virtual machine because it can be on 24 seven. And if you have a virtual server, you don't have to worry about it impacting your local machine. Although you could configure the service to run when your PC is idle, this ensures that it won't impact anything you're doing on this machine right here. So if you want to contribute some of your cycles and some of your power to something like folding at home, a virtual machine is a great option for that. Okay, so there you have it. So was that 20, 21? 
19, I think it was 20. Now I'm sure there are things that I missed in this video. I'm sure you have lots of great ideas out there too. If you have some ideas or know of things that I missed, please, please, please write them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear your ideas because I have a lot of room on my virtual server and I love adding new services. And while you're down there adding ideas in the comments, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, it's totally fine. You can hit the thumbs down too. And just as a reminder, I stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So if you have a question about this video or any other video, hop in my stream and I'd be glad to help you out. So thanks so much for watching and as always, stream on my friends.